Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, the talented and sexy Anthony Mackie tells us about his star-studded new movie and gives his take on relationships that will surprise you. Plus, Wendy's tackling your toughest questions in Ask Wendy. And we're breaking down all of today's juiciest hot topics. Now, here's Wendy. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. Thank you. Hi, Andre. Thank you, good people. Thank you. 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 Oh, there. there they go. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you, um... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, did you watch Empire last night? Yeah. Week number three, and it's still so good. Yeah! Earlier this week, it was announced that they already got picked up for a second season. Yeah! You know, sometimes shows get big ratings the first time you watch it, you know, the very first night, and then the ratings start to drop off until they, it gets canceled, but not this one. This is a good one. So, Taraji P. Henson, I've said it before, I'll say it again, everybody's good on the show, but she's the reason to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and last night, she lashed out at her ex-husband's new fiance while praying. Yeah. Take a look. <laughs> Excuse me. In this family, we say grace before we shove food in our mouths. Shall we? Give me your hand. I prayed on bended knee on many a night that this day would finally come. <coughs> and God, please do not withhold your blessings, even from holes that hire skanks to spy on me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Just, just, just so good, so ridiculous. I love the writing, I love the characters. Although, you know, remember when Taraji was here promoting Empire and she said that, um, uh, she told Lee Daniels who created the show, um, if you want me to be in the show, then I can only do it if you have Terrence Howard because they're used to working together. And if, if it's not Terrence, then you know, I don't care about, you know, being in the show. She wasn't being shady, she just wanted Terrence. So Lee ended up hiring Terrence. And she never told us who else was in the running um, who might have gotten this job if it wasn't for Terrence. Well, I found out that it was Wesley Snipes. Oh. Now, Terrence Howard is good, but Wesley Snipes? Yeah. That would have been a home run. Yeah. Yes. But the show is a home run anyway. Don't forget, Empire airs Wednesday nights at nine o'clock on Fox. Yeah. In the house. Empire is my show individually. I watch it in the man cave, but as a family, our show is power. You know, 50 Cent's show? Power, yeah, yeah. Um, lukewarm reception. It's on Stars. 
Yeah. Anyway, um, so good news for TLC. Remember yesterday we were talking about Kickstarter? They were trying to have you give them money so that they can put out a new album? And um, I told you their goal was $150,000 between the studio time and you know whatever, whatever else they needed. And so they put it on Kickstarter and in only 24 hours they had raised like $50,000 and I was shocked. Well, as of now, they've raised almost, well, well as of last night, they raised $150,000. They reached their goal. <laughs> and, and as of right now, they're up to $172,000. Well, now I think that this is terrific because I was a naysayer. I was saying, you know, nobody's going to give money because first of all, we're just getting off of our holiday budgets. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we, we've, we've spent our extra money on gifts and stuff. And um, so I said, you know, nobody's gonna give money also because while people love TLC and I love TLC too, and I'm trying to be objective because both of these girls have been here on the show and we love them. But, um, I must say, I didn't think that you cared about new TLC mu music. Because you didn't buy, you're not buying a lot of new music, even from people who put out great music, you know? You didn't buy Mariah's um, album. You, you, you know, like you're, you're, you're very selective in the music that you buy, you know? And I'm just thinking TLC's um, category of people who buy TLC's music, we're a little bit older and we have other things to spend our money on than music. So, egg on my face, $172,000. And you know, there are some pretty prominent people who donated money to them. Like, New Kids on the Block gave them $10,000. Well, when I heard that, I said, okay. I know. I said, you know, that's really nice, you know, if a, that a musician understands the struggle of other musicians, and so they gave $10,000. And then, Katy Perry donated $5,000. And you know, when you donate, when you donate money, you get stuff. Like um, for five thousand um, dollars, Katie gets a sleepover with a TLC member of her choice. <laughs> but hold on now, this is kind of cool. Imagine if you just randomly live in Homedale, New Jersey, right? And it's an affluent community. You have five thousand bucks for your kid. Your kid's about to turn thirteen years old. She wants a sleepover. You give $5,000 to Chili, and she shows up at the sleepover. <laughs> With sleeping bag in here, that'd be, like, that would be fabulous. For $1,000, you can get one of them to go to the movies with you. <laughs> well, I think that that would be fabulous. <laughs> can you imagine on opening day of Fifty Shades of Grey and you show up with t bars <laughs> You pick her up at the airport, you know, and you, she comes to your house and you get your snacks all together. Cause I don't know about you, but when I go to the movies, I do a combination of food I bring in <laughs> and a few things I might buy over there at the concession stand. But this would be fantastic. My, my Norman, the black one. <laughs> my Norman, I was telling you, donated $10. <laughs> and, and, but look. For just $10, you get a written list of their favorite songs wow. with Love, t Boss and Chili at the end. Wow. So you do get something out of it. So, so uh, wow, congratulations TLC, you made it. But I, I must say about this Kickstarter, and this is not just TLC, this is just in general. <clears throat> I thought Kickstarter was better served as something for the common man. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, say, you know, you live in Fairfield, New Jersey. You know, and, and you've, you've, you've written a script for a movie, but you're a student at Fairfield High School and you need money and your parents don't have the money. That's what I thought Kickstarter is better served at. It's, it's something weird about Kickstarter being put to use for people who either once had a lot of money or maybe still do have a lot of money. Like I know Zach Braff, what project did he put on Kickstarter? A movie. Uh -huh. Like, why would you give Zach Braff a movie, movie money, you know, when the assumption is that Zach Braff has money to make his own movie or he can go to the bank and get a loan like everybody else. 
Spike Lee put uh, something up on Kickstarter for a movie too. I just thought that was kind of weird. I think Kickstarter is for the common man, not the, not, not the, a, a superstar, you know? But congratulations, TLC. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Lindsay Lohan is having a major, <laughs> a major health scare. Well, so she was vacationing in Bora Bora over Christmas. Look at that hammock in the water. Isn't that delicious? <laughs> I could just lay there all day as, some, as long as somebody kept walking me out, you know, shots of tequila or something. <laughs> I lay there all day. This is the best. Anyway, um, she was in Bora Bora over Christmas and she caught a rare disease. <laughs> <laughs> no, from a mosquito. Well, she was, she was rushed to the Bora Bora Hospital with a high fever and joint pains. And then she was released, but it's not over because whatever she, whatever she caught, there's no cure that we know of. You know, kind of like Ebola, you know, you, you, can, you can, I guess you can cure Ebola once you keep your eye on it, but there was no, there is no cure for this mosquito thing, initially speaking. So, you know, of all the things for her to catch, you, <laughs> With all that hard living she's done. <laughs> only to be done in by a mosquito. Um, no, but you know what? It seems like she has a dark cloud over her head. Kind of like Chris Brown, you know, like wherever she goes, something, you know, messy is going to happen. You know, even, even if it's not her fault or like Chris's fault or anything. So her mom, Dina, um, who is out in Long Island. Um, she rushed to Lindsay's side in London and she's desperately, uh, she desperately wants Lindsay to move back to Long Island so that she can take care of her. Well, that, that's great in theory, Dina. The problem is, is that you can barely take care of yourself. <laughs> and, and also, and also I think a lot of Lindsay's problem is, is that she's had people take care of her from the time she, she's a little girl into womanhood. You know, at some point, a woman's gotta stand on her own. And the only way you can do that is basically just throw your kid out there and lock the door. <laughs> and, you know, really, at 28 years old, you know what I'm saying? Just so, you know, I'm sorry to hear about what happened, Lindsay. That's all the more reason to stay in the house, which is, I tell you, I love to stay in the house. I like to stay in the house with the, with the windows open and watch the world go by. <laughs> But being in the house is the best because you're safe from everything, you know? And, and that's also one of the problems with going places where they, you have to sleep in a mosquito net, you know? And, and it's not like the brochures you know, hide that from you. You know, if, you know, they'll tell you, like, bring mosquito repellent if you don't have any. We have it here at the gift shops. Uh, you know, make sure that you prepare to wear a mosquito net. Uh, in other words, there, there's a mosquito problem. There's one more place on the face of the earth that I would have loved to have gone that I will not be going. Bora Bora. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, honestly, you know. I, you know, I love to see other places, but I like to see them from the safety of my house. I can look on the computer and just see how beautiful everything is, you know? <laughs> it's really a shame between mosquitoes Tsetse flies, you know, meningitis terrorist, <laughs> airport ridiculousness, and, and hotel chambermaids that steal your stuff. <laughs> it, it really just makes me just wanna stay in Jersey. Yeah. It, it's horrible. <laughs> so, Kylie Jenner's on the front of the new Cosmo magazine. I secretly still read Cosmo. I do. And Cosmo Girl. You gotta, you gotta keep up on what the kids are up to. You just can't read Ladies Home Journal all your life and think, <laughs> think you know what's popping out here. So um, I especially like the January one because that's the, that's the horoscope edition. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. The bedside astrologer, they call it. It's a tear out, so after you throw away the magazine, you keep it in your night table, and then you check on your life as the, as the year goes by. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, 
Kylie says that she's not against plastic surgery. <laughs> Gee, you think? <laughs> no, she says she doesn't desire it now. Now, there's been a lot of speculation about her face, but we'll talk about her breasts first, okay? <laughs> she Instagrammed uh, this photo and it sparked rumors that she might have gotten breast implants. Well, I must say, I thought she got breast implants also. Although, if you look at this picture right here in the burgundy dress, you see under boob smile, where maybe she does have enough volume to wear that special bra from Victoria's Secret, because that's what she said she got, uh, some Victoria's Secret bra, and she put it on in this right here. I don't know, as a breast nista, I'm not sure. <laughs> Clap if you think that these are breast implants. Clap if you understand the power of a good bra. It looks like you guys are on the fence as well. I don't know, you know, when you have that mother and she's only 17 years old, I could see Chris signing the papers for her to get plastic surgery, unfortunately, um, because you know, you have to have somebody sign the papers. Um, now, let's talk about the mouth. Um, she says that she likes to overdraw her lips. I insist that these are li uh, lip injections. Here's what she used to look like. She's not a bad looking girl to begin with, but I have to say, down here, the lip injection one, money well spent. Oh. It's horrible to say. It's horrible, but money well spent. You know, I think that like moms need to tell their daughters they're beautiful, at least until the daughters are 18 years old, in which case then the mom doesn't get blamed when the daughter gets plastic surgery, you know? Because when I look at this girl, I say, anything that she's gotten done, including the lips. This is your fault, uh, Chris. You only pass, yeah. Because we've all read that you um, never really told Chloe that she's beautiful and that's where she gets her body dysmorph, you know? So I can only imagine what you told Kylie, um, if anything at all, you know? Um, she could have gotten the lips when she's 18. I don't know about you, but the reason that I judge is because she's 17 and I know that I've never seen her carry a book bag. So between not going to school, <laughs> having a 25 year old boyfriend and you know, a push up bra slash breast implants, it's just all too much. Plastic surgery, only on account of where I was raised and what I was used to. To me, the only plastic surgery that's acceptable is um, a nose job. Because when I was growing up in Ocean Township, that was almost like a rite of passage. Like, you know, you got your nose job as like a bar bat mitzvah gift or something like that. that. That was like a way of life, do you know what I mean? There were two things that, you know, if you didn't have one of the two, then you weren't necessarily that cool. One, a nose job. Or, t no, my button nose is by nature. Although, there are many people who have accused me for years and I find it fascinating and lovely. Thank you. Um, and, and then the other one, if you didn't have braces, you weren't part of the in crowd. You know what I mean? Like when I was growing up, I, I wore braces. I was glad to have crooked teeth so I could be part of the in crowd too. Anyway, um, Kylie, whatever you're doing, money well spent. And Chris, shame on you. You know that thing with Tiger Woods' homeless tooth? <laughs> well, I, here's the first picture. Okay, first of all, he has a, a, a dead brown tooth in the front of his mouth. <laughs> and no, because I thought that the tooth that popped out at Lindsay's, you know, award-winning, whatever, he, I thought, <laughs> I originally thought that it was, you know, a fake tooth, maybe, you know, screwed into his skull or something like that with some bonding glue and it just boop, popped out. I don't know that much about fake teeth because I don't have any, but when I do have some, then I'll be more proficient in it. But apparently it was, it was his doctor, excuse me, his manager who put it out there that Tiger was knocked in the face by a video camera during a media frenzy to get to Lindsay. Well, the event organizers uh, were eyewitnesses and said that he was never knocked in the tooth with anything. And, and then we consulted a dentist. Well, that's what we do. And a dentist, or the dentist that we consulted said that 
Mm-mm. Because that brown tooth was a real tooth. So now, you know how it is when you get a tooth extracted, how there's blood everywhere. And if it, if it was knocked out by the camera, then he would have had maybe a split lip and some swelling. And that's a clean break right there. So my assumption is, is that the, the, the manager felt as though he had to say something, so he said that. But you know what? My thought is that, you know, this is over in Italy. And maybe Tiger left the US to surprise his girlfriend. The tooth wasn't ready, you know, because your, 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 dentist, your dentist has to order. You know, they make, a, they make a mold of your mouth and then they have to order your um, fakery. Maybe the tooth wasn't ready and Tiger decided he's going to go anyway to Italy to surprise his girl. Which, I don't blame him, you know. I don't know whether this tooth fell out in Italy or not. Maybe it did fall out in Italy, but maybe he feels like me and a lot of you. I don't want to go to the doctors someplace where I don't speak the, the language. Like, I don't trust translators and I just, I'm sure the doctors around the world are absolutely lovey, lovely, probably better than American doctors. <laughs> but, you know, you get used to certain things. Like my girlfriend, Toni Braxton, she doesn't have breast implants, but Tone, remember years ago when I was on the radio and we were talking and you told me, you told me this behind the scenes. She said she was in England and one of her breast implants, this is back when she had them, one of her breast implants popped. <gasps> well, she's like me. She let it, def she just came back. She came back to the States and she got it replaced here. She wasn't gonna get, and even though she speaks the language in England, she felt more comfortable with her own doctors. That, that's how I feel. Has anybody ever been to doctors in a foreign land for some emergency? Clap if you feel like me, like vacation over, I'm going back home. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So that dental floss, uh, racy bikini photo that, uh, that Amber Rose took, got everybody talking. It's good, it's good, it's good. Now people are saying that Kim K is trying to one-up Amber. Remember, Amber hit it first, but then Kim went on and married the madman. So there's like competition between the girls, you know what I'm saying? It, probably in their minds. Uh, anyway, Kim's is our hot shot of the day and it's brought to you by Xenadrin. Hit it! There's only one guy on our staff that said he would rather Amber. Everybody gave it up for Kim in this and, and I, I'll tell you why. Okay, okay audience. In, ladies included, yeah. clap, clap, cl oh, wait, hold on, we don't shout out here. <laughs> well, we do shout, but not for polls. Look, clap if you would rather Kim. <laughs> clap if you would rather Amber. I don't believe the majority of you, you know what I think that you're caught up in? Remember, you gotta compartmentalize your hate. Kim, <laughs> Kim might be annoying and she has ways that we can't stand, but look, I just find, like this is what a lot of the guys said on the staff, and this is what I think too. First of all, I like this bikini and the boots better. Like the presentation is better. And also, the tattoos look dirty. And I have tattoos, but I can tell you, and I've said this before, if you have not scarred your body with tattoos, keep it clean. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather Kim, that's all. Amber's very beautiful.